Welcome to The Chronically Curious. I'm Lindsay Raquel Johnson. I had originally planned that tonight I would record a short video that basically talked about the various kinds of topics that we would be covering on this channel, um, at least the main ones. Instead, I went on a rant about democracy. So <laughs> that's what I will be uploading tonight. And the um, topic video will come at a future date. I'm American and it's 2024. We will be talking about democracy and voting and all of the issues that are facing America at the moment and that are facing many countries around the world. Uh, we'll talk about why democracy matters and why it's gotten to the point where there are people who think it doesn't. Um, so yes, this year that will definitely be a topic, but it will continue to be a topic for forever. When I was a little kid, I read A Brave New World and 1984, and I believed in the possibility that they could come true, you know? But there's a difference between intellectually believing that something could happen, that your country could become a totalitarian state, and really truly believing knowing that it could happen. And, you know, I was born in 75, technically during the Cold War. And, you know, I have memories related to being raised during the Cold War. But honestly, democracy always seemed pretty stable. You know, I didn't legitimately think it was something I had to worry about, I guess. It was just part of my background. It was part of society. And that's a very blessed place to be where you can, where you're raised in a society where it's like, oh yeah, that's just the way it is. Democracy, of course, no worries, you know? It's a very privileged place to be in. Um, it's also a very false place to be in because you cannot take your eye off it. And we are in this situation today largely because a lot of us, i.e. most of society, took our eyes off of democracy and just figured that it was assured, that it was a, I don't know, some sort of a natural law. <laughs> and it's not. Um, Obviously, if I'd taken the time to really think about this, say, as a teenager, I would have said that it was not a natural law. You know, I know about many countries around the world that have gone in a negative direction, politically speaking. Um, and I know that there's nothing special about America that would prevent us from doing the same. Destruction is always faster and easier than creation. Inertia is a powerful force in the universe and entropy is a powerful force. Making something new and maintaining something that you've created is hard work. It legitimately is. And I think in our society, we are sometimes prone to not doing the hard work that we need to do. Keeping a democracy around is hard work and it's not something that's ever going to end. It's not like, oh yay, 2024 is over, go 2025, we don't have to think about this anymore. No, no, this is gonna be something that I have to think about for the rest of my life. Uh, and my nephews, I don't have children, but my nephews are going to have to think about this. And my great, 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 great nephews and nieces will hopefully have to think about it. And if they don't have to think about maintaining their democracy, then they're going to have to think about how to get it back. So it's easier to maintain. Let's maintain this democracy. Let's make it better. Let's not destroy it. I heard someone say recently, um, in reference to our political system, that if something's broke, you just have to destroy it. And that is a very, very short-sighted way to think. 
when something's broken, you have to fix it. And I will acknowledge right now, our political system is in many ways broken, but it is not the kind of broken where you go take it to the recycling bin. It's the kind of broken where you figure out how to fix it because it's valuable and it's worth being fixed. Look, what one person does matters. What one country does matters. We are a global society. We are increasingly interconnected. And America does not stand in a vacuum. I think that might be one of the fundamental political divides in our society at the moment. That there's part of American society that thinks that we can stand all by ourselves, on our own, isolationist, don't need anybody. Um, there's also the, all of the transactional mentality. There's a failure to recognize how things are tied together in an increasingly complicated world. What we do matters. I am not a fan of American exceptionalism. But... America has been a democratic country for a little while now. And we do stand, or we have traditionally stood uh, for democracy as a country. And we have been a force for, unfortunately, sometimes a literal force, um, but let's say we have been an influence um, that has been pro-democracy throughout the rest of the world, sometimes through government programs and diplomatic missions, and sometimes through movies and books and the cultural influences, or the language of ideas and the intellect. What happens in America and to American democracy really does matter. People pay attention. America might not have the same kind of influence that we did, say, eight years ago. Uh, we might not have the same respect, certainly, that we did eight years ago. We still do have the power to influence. And that's a big responsibility that we do have to take seriously. We'll be talking about critical thinking and logical fallacies because our educational system has failed us to a large extent and critical thinking is not something that's taught in school anymore and so people get to adulthood and don't know how to check their own assumptions to see whether their thinking is clear to see whether they're getting all the data to know how to figure out if the data is valid right or if there are holes in it that you're not seeing, if you're not checking your assumptions about reality, then those assumptions can be used to manipulate you. That's a dangerous position to be in.